You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Lutkin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. And joining me today, she's back, she's better than ever, and she's got some news for us, folks. It's the one, the only, Brooke the Guillotine Gilly. Brooke, it's a pleasure, it's a privilege, it's so nice seeing your face. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing, you know, pretty darn good, probably the best I've been in a long time. It's nice to talk to you, it feels like we haven't talked in forever. Well, it has been a while, but I will say this. If those want to see the first video of myself and Brooke, it is now up on LFCFights.com as a part of Season 5 of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, soon to be on the Roku channel, the LFC Network on Roku. So, yeah, last time we did our thing, we talked about your bouts at Sturgis, and you have a bout that you would like to announce with us before we even get into more LFC talk and do as you and I can only do. You have some news for everybody, so I'll let the floor of yours here, man. I'll let the floor of yours. So I am super excited to announce that I took a fight with Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships November 5th in Orlando, Florida against Jessica Borga. First and foremost, the Black Widow, and congratulations to you, Miss Gilly. You're welcome. First and foremost, another one going into the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, because for all you LFC fans know that one of the prospects, one of the top prospects, and Miss Ty Emery just came off an amazing bout, an amazing win, and her Bare Knuckle debut and really showed off her assets, if you will, (laughs) to the fight. (laughs) I love the controversy over it. Oh, it's my. so great. Like, people are so up in arms about it. And I'm like, it's bare knuckle fighting. What do you expect? Like, it's not a Miss America pageant. <laughs> What's funny to me about it, too, is, and I think, as you know, and I know, Ty, I wasn't shocked in the slightest of it. I mean, when you have someone whose main, like, tagline is titties and violence, you know what you're getting. <laughs> right. It's, it's not like she hides her personality at all, you know? Oh. She doesn't, like, pretend to be this meek little thing. And then all of a sudden, it's like, bam. It's like... This is who she is, and dude, go for it, girl. Right, and I think you have to have that attitude. You have to have that upfrontness about you, and you and I were talking about this. We've talked about this. You're very blunt in your ways as well, so that's why I can appreciate you about you. I know you respect other people's opinions, and we've talked about it, but you have that style with your profile of how you really are very blunt and opinionated about it. I can respect that, because a lot of us need to speak our minds and free our minds, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I have to apologize for myself, but, you know, (laughs) what do you do? (laughs) Well, we're human, and I think in the day and age of social media, which has its positives and it has its negatives, you know, sometimes we have to get things off our chest. Some things people will like, some people won't. But at the end of the day, if you can help someone or if you can really relate to someone, at the end of the day, you're evoking emotions. If you get people talking, it's a good thing. Touche. I mean, absolutely. My favorite is when my friends, when I, like, I'll post something because I'm raging or I'm, like, really passionate about it. And I'll be like, ah, like, an hour later, I'll go and delete it. And then I've got my friends that are like, oh, no, you don't got to look that easy. And I get screenshots of it sent to my inbox. I'm like, thanks, guys. (laughs) Well, I think we've all had that moment of we'll write something on Facebook or Twitter. And then we realize, I probably shouldn't have said that. (laughs) We just delete it right right away. It happens. It happens. I've got on my rants, too. I mean, I think, back, okay, so back, I'll say this right now. Back in, like, 2010, 2011, I would just, like, comment and write random shit on my Facebook where I would just, like, say what I thought about something. And that, mind you, I was, like, 19 or 20 at the time, and now I'm a 30-year-old man. Like, I don't do that stuff anymore, but I still will speak my mind. But, yeah, when you're younger or even sometimes with how you are with your mindset, it's just, like, you got verbal diarrhea, so to speak. You got diarrhea the yeah. mouth. Yep, yep. And then you get to your logical sense of self and you're like, oops. (laughs) That's like one of the kickers about social media is it's like, you know, you can rant something in your house when no one's there and nobody will ever hear it but you. But then you rant on social media and it's like, you don't know who all sees it. I know. I mean, I've had my rants and I mean, I'll say this right now. Like we talk about bare knuckle fighting championship and the controversy with Ty, which again, 
again, what do you expect? Bare knuckle fighting championship. But I, what I always laugh is about like not even bare knuckle, but there have been like some MMA women's mixed martial arts companies that look at us like, oh God, it's lingerie. Well, I'm like, if you look at it really and analyze, dissect, and decipher it, there's a lot of women that have backgrounds in wrestling. They have backgrounds in mixed martial arts. Like we're not really doing anything that's different except for the fact that we're in lingerie. So you mix the sex appeal, and I think you could agree with me on this. Sexiness comes in different layers. As I'm doing the layers thing here, sexiness mm-hmm. comes in different layers, whether it be confidence, whether it be internal and external beauty, the spirit, what have you. So, I mean, you could look mm-hmm. at sexiness from a lot of different angles, right? I, I absolutely agree with you. And, you know, there's a lot of things about the LFC that make fighting more feminine. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, fighting isn't a feminine thing. It's 2022. Yeah, it is. Like, everything is a feminine thing and everything is a masculine thing now. Like, I don't know. It's it's the the boundary has been so buffed out that I think people need to start realizing that it's okay to mix a little bit of femininity with something masculine. Yes. Not nice. such <laughs> I get you. I get you. But no, that's the thing too. It's like there's a lot of female and males like intertwining in different MMA, pro wrestling, what have you. And I also look at it from a stance too as well. And I'll say this and I include you in these sentiments, Miss Brooke Gilly. Y'all are kicking our ass. You know what I'm saying? In all different sports, y'all are kicking us men's ass. We can hardly compete sometimes because y'all, to put it bluntly, are kicking our ass. Yeah, I don't know. I think the playing fields are pretty even. It depends on what sport you're talking. True, but I mean, the I think what I always love about it, too, is it's like it's the evolution of women because we've known this, but it's being more into the up forefront. And I think as we've gotten older in 2022, as we evolve, we really get to see what women get to do, and rightfully so, because back in yep. the day, it's the ignorance of, you know, well, that's not ladylike if you do that. And I'm like, nah. I mean, if you want to play football, play football. If you want to play baseball, play right. baseball. Fucking go out. Right. And, and if your son wants to do hip hop dance or ballet, let him. Like, I, I, I don't get, I don't get why it's such a big deal to like categorize things as pink is girl and blue is boy. Like, I don't know, but whatever. I get it. I mean, it's like back in the day, and I'm sure it still exists today. If a guy wants to try out for the cheerleading team, let him fucking do it. Let him just jump. Let him get his cheer on. If he wants to do pirouettes with pom-poms, let him. (laughs) Hey, he's a lucky son of a gunman when you get to do those routines. Give me an A, give me a C, what does that spell? Boom, or whatever it is, you know? You know, I mean, let him do it. Have some fun. It kind of reminds me of, remember the hot chick with friggin' Rob Schneider? Yes. (laughs) When he's doing the friggin' cheer routine and the whole nine there? Oh, that's that. And I look at friggin' um, dodgeball when friggin' Justin Long is doing it and he's doing the whole thing. And it's just, and he gets the dodgeball right to his face. Oh, right. Like right? You, you can see that in popular culture. You can see it in today's culture. It's a beautiful thing, man. Equality. Equality. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Really? Well, My they, favorite part is when he's like, it's me, Jessica. <laughs> Over the phone. It's me, Jessica. <laughs> in here. <laughs> I'm in here. <laughs> it's like, First of all, what an ensemble of a cast, right? Anna Ferris. Oh, which, man. Oh, my god. It's so funny. It is. And a lot of people don't realize like, that film is funny. They used to shit on it. And first of all, it's 20 years old now. Can you believe that, right? Oh, my gosh. Don't say that. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Like, I was like 10 when that came out. And here's the thing, man. My my dad was always big into, like, reading the reviews. And I remember seeing him that at the Islip Theater where I used to live on Long Island, right? Like, we saw yeah. that. It was funny. And I remember I wanted to go see, like, oh, my God. Remember Swim Fan with uh, Jesse? Well, that dude, Jesse. I think it was Jesse Bradford and freaking Erica Christensen and Sherry Appleby, that whole nine. Remember Swim Fan? I don't think I've seen that one. Okay. I think you finally came up with something I haven't heard or seen. <laughs> That's why you got me, man. And I got you. So, <laughs> Swim Fan. Gotta do some homework now. I got your back. So, sw- so, Swim Fan was a film with Jesse Bradford, Erica Christensen, and Sherry Appleby. He's the star of the swim team. Erica Christensen, Christensen, or wherever you pronounce her name. Either way, she's fine as wine. She <laughs> plays the um, kind of like the psycho character. She's like obsessed with jesse bradford's character and sherry appleby is his girlfriend and it starts out with them pretty much you know it's wholesome it's just she take gives him a ride home then they go to the pool love making starts and then that's where the whole thing goes downhill she comes obsessed it's a bad thing tries to hurt the girl you gotta watch the movie because it's actually pretty interesting 
I think I'm going to have to watch that one tonight. <laughs> well, no, that's the thing, too. Like, you look at movies from 2002 to where we are now. Like, I'm going to tell you something right now. Netflix, I just watched the whole Dharma series, and holy shit. You know what dude, I'm saying? Dude, no. Like, I love that shit, right? Right. I watch it all the time. When I was watching that one, I was like... <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, Evan did such a good, he is like the actor of our generation, I think. Like, he did such a good job playing him. Ah. The the little subtleties and nuances, like, he nailed Jeffrey Dahmer to the T. Oh, man. It was so good. It was so good, but I went to go watch it with the boyfriend, and I kind of watched it without him while he was at work, and he (laughs) got home, and I was like, um... I'm not watching that again. <laughs> on your own. I don't even think he has watched it. <laughs> I mean, you really see, like, I mean, there have been documentaries, and I remember the last movie, I think, was probably in the early 2000s that they did. It was just called Dharma. But this mm-hmm. really opens up to, like, the police are just fucking, oh, I can't do it. Douchebags. Douchebags. Just Rich- complete douchebags. Richard Jenkins playing his father. Again, another one to the tape. Dude, and the funny thing is, is it was so well done that there were times, and I don't know if this makes me a psychopath or not. It might. Who knows? I'm getting ready to do a bare knuckle fight against a Bellator fighter, so I could be a little crazy. (laughs) But um, I found myself empathizing, or not empathizing, sympathizing with Dahmer and almost feeling bad for him and the dad at points during it. And it was brief, but it was there. Like when he was left home alone for three months without his parents, I was like, dude, I kind of feel for this guy. And I was like, what the fuck is going on with my head right now that I just said, I feel for Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, no, you're, you're not wrong because I mean, the poor kid, like you're dealing with your parents constantly fighting. The mother who's just out of control on pills. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have, like, that whole family assurance of being at the home. When they're constantly screaming, what are you going to do? You're not giving the kid attention. And then he's just home for three months of drinking and then bringing everybody home and just chopping up that dude with the hitchhiker because he's like, hey, man, I want to go to yeah, the yeah. concert. I'm not like that. So you have that element of he's got to do something, number one. And number two. Gotta, right. And it's got to have something to do with abandonment. Yes. Like, it had to have initiated, like, just clicked him over. Because, like, the guy that he was dating, I, I can't recall his name. And that's one thing that I hate about these stories, is the victims don't get as much attention. Oh. And, yeah. you know, they're not recalled as easily. Right. Yeah, but the one that he was seeing for quite a while. Um, Tony. Tony, yes, Tony. Uh, you know, it was... Oh, it was so graphic. It just blew my mind. I don't know. Oh, gosh, it was bad. (laughs) It was good, bad. (laughs) What gets me about it is there's a couple times where he could have slipped him the icky, and he didn't. So you're thinking, okay, he's finally found that stability. It's going to be And then he's like, all right, I'll be back next week. He forgets the keys. He gets the urge, and the poor guy's dead on the bed. And it broke me because that poor guy could have been that salvation and then here we are. Yeah. Oh, so sad. And all the parents. Right. Oh, it's just awful. <laughs> so not to give a lot of spoilers, folks, but definitely go out of your way and watch the Dharma series. It's really, really good. And the other thing I'll touch upon with that, what a bunch of sick fucks just rigging messaging him and writing letters into him in jail, giving him oh, money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's a weird psyche of human beings to be attracted to something like that. So like I'm, I'm watching the Parkland shooting trial right now, Nicholas Cruz. And uh, he has women writing to him. And after watching all the parents do their victim impact statements, I mean, I was just, it's just so freaking heartbreaking. And I just, I can't, I can't understand how someone would be like, I think you're cool. Like, like he did, like he idolized the, um, what's the Alex Jones one? Uh, Sandy Hook. He yeah. idolized the Sandy Hook uh, shooter. And it's just, I, I don't understand it. I, I'm a, I can understand that they're crazy and that's about as far as I can fathom it. 
Well, yeah. Well, I mean, like the other thing, like with that is like when they're like they want to, you know, donate Jeffrey Dahmer's brain to science, and they're like, no, <laughs> no, we really, we, we'll just cremate him. We're not going to donate his brain to science. Just cremate the kid, and you'll be fine. You know what I'm saying? Like cremation was fine. We don't need to look at what's going on in the head. We don't need to. We need to know the psyche. You know. No, because knowing our government, we probably end up with a Jeffrey Dahmer clone in 2045 or something. <laughs> the futuristic like a whole army of them or something. Yep, exactly. But no, that's the thing too, and I, I look at it from a stance too as well. I actually just, and I'm going to recommend this to people. My boy Dan messaged me, and he's like, "You got to read this book." So one of the detectives on that case for Jeffrey Dahmer put out a book called "Getting Dahmer." And it looks really, really good. I would recommend it to anybody. I'm about to start reading it. It gives the detective's point of view going into the case, the outcome of the case. It's not like when his father tried to put out the book. This is more in depth of here's the case. Here's what happens. This is my thoughts. More factual with like good representation of what happened from that perspective. Would that be interesting? You're going to have to message me that so I don't forget it. <laughs> I got you. I got you. This is why I got you with your pop culture and stuff. And here's the funny part about it. Too. I got you. Yeah, no, that's the thing too. It's like I was laughing at you because my girl Amanda sent me a TikTok and I'm like, it all comes back to Aaron Carter because we joke about Aaron Carter on this show a lot every time I have you on. And I can have that same evacuation and laughter when it comes to AC in the building. It's like you're not a 2000s kid if you don't know this song, if you didn't grow up with this song. Okay. Right. Well, here's the thing. Aaron Carter, no matter how screwed up he is, no matter how many OnlyFans he does, no matter how many times he breaks up with his girlfriend, no matter how many times he tattoos his face, Aaron Sparty, come get it, will always be the jam in the early 2000s. He was our Justin Bieber before Justin Bieber. He was. He was our Justin Bieber. Oh, gosh. I hope Justin Bieber doesn't have Aaron Carter's future. No. I mean. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, God, no, but no, I don't see that. But I think with Justin Bieber, he's done his own fair, you know, bad shit, too. But I don't see him taking it to that level. Right. Yeah. I think he kind of faded himself out. I don't know. I don't want to give him any more airtime. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you. But, yeah, that's that's the world that we live in and also the world that we live in. Also, when we talk about Jessica Borger here, I've seen her stuff with Leah McCourt. I've seen a lot of her footage going into her bouts in Bellator, just her overall fighting style. A lot of strikes, a lot of kicks, a lot of takedowns. Vicious. You know what I'm saying? I look at it from a stance, too, as well. If you're going in there, your debut, you're starting it up, boom. Here's the guillotine with her guillotine choke, which, by the way, to put you over some more, Miss Brooke Gilly, watch how she just DDT Shelby Paris right into the guillotine. Probably one of the best combinations I have ever seen to get a, tea, a guillotine choke live at Sturgis, man. So, I mean, if you can <laughs> infiltrate that or just punch, kick, do what you got to do, you're a shoo -in, man. You're doing the damn thing. Right. right. Well, it's straight-up boxing. Right. So, so we're taking out the element of any of that. True. Unfortunately, because I think she is amazing with jits, and I would love the opportunity to grapple with her. But we're doing stand up, which I mean, I just I've, I've been watching her fights. I watched her Leah fight, and um, there's a couple things that I I can see an in on, but I'm more than anything super stoked for the opportunity to get in there with someone like Jessica Borga. Um, I'm, I'm humbled by it even um, and gracious for it. I, I really like her. She seems like an awesome person. I love that she posts about her kids all the time and being a mom and fighting and, you know, the jam in between. Um, she seems like she's got a lot of heart. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And win or lose, no matter what, I'm going to learn something from her. So how many times in life do you get the opportunity to learn something from a Bellator fighter like that? You know, so... I'm really jacked for it. And I'm going to train my ass off. I've got a new coach. Uh, pretty excited. Billy Walters is going to be coaching me. He's got a gym down in Florida and then a gym in Glen Rock, Wyoming. So in between that, I've got a couple friends here that I used to train with back in the day when I first started training when I was like 19 that still live here. So we're getting our old asses in there. <laughs> Well, you're only as old as you feel, and I'm going to say this right now as I've just turned 30. My back is cracking, and it's my spinal, to quote Mike Tyson. But also at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? As we get older, we never stop learning. We never stop putting in that work. 
And I mean, right. you, you are an, a pure example of that with the representation of your presentation. And I mean, you got the strikes. I mean, if we've seen it with Shelby, if we've seen it with Bell Lake, the strike game, you're, you're on point, man. I mean, if, I mean, it may be accidental as well. I mean, he gave poor Susie Stiletto Quinn a little bit of a, a little bit of a bloody no ski back at LSC 34 to be wild. So, I mean, hey, man, you, you got that vicious style. You know what I'm saying? You got that style, if you will, Miss Brooke Gilly. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna try my hardest. I'm gonna train hard and behave myself. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta start behaving myself a little more. <laughs> I, I think you got this, and I think it's gonna be a spectacular fight. If what we've seen from Ty Emery is any indication, I think you're gonna kill it. And I mean, for you, and I'm gonna say this right now. How great is it to see kind of everybody doing like the territory type of deal where, I mean, a lot of the LFC girls, like look at Bella Inc. for God's sake. She just came off a rough and rowdy doing her first pro fight. Shout out to Bella Inc. coming out. Another one killing it, looking to intertwine and coincide with other different promotions. Yeah, dude, Bella's my girl. I love Bella. She is one of my favorites. (laughs) She is just so awesome. I don't know. All well, except for one. There's one girl I don't like, but everybody else that I've met, I just absolutely love. It's like an instant sisterhood. Right. Hey, well, that happens where we're gonna not like somebody that we meet. There's there's always gonna be that one. One it's there's like that one. <laughs> kind of just like it. I'll make a pop culture reference. It's like friggin' the Osmonds. One bad apple spoils a whole bunch, girl. It's kind of like that type of deal, you know? Right. 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 Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I feel you. you. But no, I mean, well, first and foremost, in a way, it's kind of good because conflict, conflict builds to great interaction. But also at the same time, if you have that hatred for someone, you really don't want to do it. But also at the same time, controversy creates cash in a way, so to speak. So, I mean, hey, sometimes people love drama, man. Look at the Kardashians. (laughs) Look at the. I've never watched a single episode of that show ever. Like ever. And I've seen like, you know, how you scroll through TikTok or whatever and you get clips of it. And I'm like. I don't get it. I I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't either. And I mean, they make a big deal out of it, but I'm also like, well, for me, we've talked about this. Like, give me some old school celebrityality rock of love. Like, I'll watch those two fight. Right? Like, I'll take that. Or celebrity death match. Okay. Now we're going to talk about this. Old school school celebrity. Yeah, you see, you, you peaked me here. So old school celebrity death match or the new school celebrity death match. I came out in like the mid 2000s. Old Thank school. you. Thank Definitely you. Old school. Britney Spears in the old school one was the best. Mm. Oh gosh, I miss that. Me too. Good old MTV when MTV was good. <laughs> and you had like Stone Cold and The Undertaker on the show, and they incorporated a lot of elements of celebrities. The ones in 2005, it's like I don't want to see like K Fed and all those in like clay form. Like I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it didn't have that same oomph like the 90s did. But yeah, no, yeah. I agree with you. Fucking MTV now before we had cat fish and friggin which how do you still how does that show still have syndication with what we know about technology now and really you know finding out who's fake and who's not how do you still fucking get catfished i don't understand i have no idea i literally have no idea i kind of want to use my own pictures and pretend to be somebody else and try and catfish somebody just to see if it is actually that easy because like i'm 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 the type of person, like, if a dude sends me something, like, romantic in a message or whatever, I will copy and paste it into Google. I'm not even kidding you. Because I'm like, is he, does he actually know how to spell? Or did he Google things to say to a girl? <laughs> oh, we all get that on Facebook, Twitter. Remember that, Trevor. <laughs> You'll be busted. <laughs> oh, my God. But, no, that's the thing, too. Like, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you always have, like, that one message of saying, like, hey, cutie, hey, sexy, or what have you. And then they take you to, like, their cam link. Or it's like, hey, let's meet up here. And it's like, when did Facebook become, like, a fucking dating app? It's not a dating okay. app. It's just, ah, uh, I, yeah, and I've seen that still. What's so funny is, like, we're recording on Skype right now, folks. You would be surprised at how many Skype accounts also have that, and they'll send you crap like that. It even happens on platforms like Skype. Yeah. I've gotten wiser to it. The one that they always try to get me with, it's on Instagram. And I always get, I never wear jewelry. I, I just, I don't like it. <laughs> and uh, I always get these messages, be a brand ambassador, wear our jewelry. And I'm like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> like, no. But it's sad because they do get people sucked into it. And that's one thing that people need to be leery of. Because what they'll do is they'll be like, be a brand ambassador for us. And people think brand ambassador and they get all stoked. And then it's like, you have to buy a hoodie from us and then post pictures and advertise for us. And then you can earn this. And I'm like, 
you're getting duped into buying their shit and advertising for free for them. Just so you know. Well, I'm going to say this right now, speaking as experience with the LFC account, speaking mostly on Instagram. All right. We get that like once a week of friggin' like jewelry. Hey, buy my jewelry. Mm-hmm. Hey, would you like to sponsor our brand? Would you like to collab? No. I'd like you to yep. leave me alone. <laughs> I'd like you to leave yeah. me alone. Go away. Who are you? <laughs> it happens. Right. And that's the thing, folks. And I'll say this right now. If you want to check out the LFC Instagram, fights underscore LFC. If you actually have serious inquiries, message there on Twitter, LFC underscore fights. And don't be the jewelry people or be the brand ambassadors because you're not. I even get an email sometimes. Like some random ass email will just message me about being their fucking branding for clothing. Like I don't know if you get it randomly in emails, but sometimes I get like randomly in emails and it's freaking ridiculous. Yeah, no. My, my email is pretty locked down. I'm pretty particular about it. I'm one of those people that will go through and like click on the very bottom and follow the link to unsubscribe. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. And I mean, what I also do enjoy, I think you can agree with me on this when it comes to content, when it comes to variety and what I love about both talk bear and uncle fighting championship first, like the women that are coming in, like you, like Borga, like Ty, I think really showcase, we talk about the representation of your presentation. There's so many different styles and clashes that really makes for a great fight. And it's amazing to see like the female side of things for women's mixed martial arts blowing up because it's a scene like no other. And I think it's a lot of things that are being slept on right now, you know? Oh, I absolutely agree. <clears throat> you know, speaking of bare knuckle and like personalities clashing or whatever. <clears throat> so I was going through and I'm like, watching all the different girls at the different weight classes and there's a girl kill a B and she starts calling out this other girl. I don't want to mispronounce her name. Fiera Fiera. Yeah. Um, and so they ended up getting a fight and I think it was a title match. And she punches her in the face like six times and the girl drops down this little cute, adorable blonde girl. But I don't let that fool you because I did watch a couple of fights for this one. And she she was feisty as shit. (laughs) But um, she drops down and she goes like this at her corner and she's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm done. And it's like 10 seconds into the fight. And her corner pushes her back into the fight after they started counting and she gets waylaid in the face like three or four more times and she just falls to the ground crying and i was like holy shit i can't wait to not do that (laughs) but i like i felt so bad for her because like this other chick is like buff as shit and she's coming out and like she has like way broader shoulders it just one it kind of made me like question the allowance of the match because she didn't look like she was near up to par to be in the ring with that other girl. That's all I'm going to say about that. But her corner should be ashamed of himself because if my corner ever didn't pull me out when I was like full on in tears, calling it for a decent reason, you're fired. Absolutely. No, if, and, or buts about it, you're supposed to be like, my safety net like my go-to and if i'm crying and i'm going like this at a down count yeah no i don't know but anyways lots of personality in that one you should go watch it it's not very long (laughs) yes folks go watch the fight i know which fight you're talking about i keep i keep my hands on the on the levels i keep my ears to the street so to speak and i mean you have to because at the same time as well, which first and foremost, it's kind of like Rocky IV, like friggin', <laughs> friggin' Apollo Creed and Ivan Drago throw the damn towel and he friggin' right. right? You don't want to get to that point. You don't need but to. That's what, exactly. And that's what your, you know, your corner's there for. So I don't know what caused, I don't know if she just, I, I'd, I'd like to think that it was something more than just getting hit in the face because I'd watched a couple of her fights before that and like, she can take a, what was her name? Hannah Guy, her fight with Hannah Guy. Like, both of them went all rounds to the end, bloody. I mean, just taking it from each other. Or maybe that shit just has that big of a hit and she wasn't expecting it. But I kind of feel like there was a little something more to it than just getting hit. Like, it seemed like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel you. 
And I mean, that's what the sport of bare knuckle fighting championships does. And I mean, it brings great talents. It brings a lot of women together and badass men and women. I kind of equate it like, well, look at Invicta MMA, right? Like Invicta is one of the top women's mixed martial arts promotions. I mean, Ty is friends with a lot of people in Invicta. Cindy Dandois has done her thing in Invicta. There's so many great things that are from the Invicta side of things where it's kind of like the stomping ground, the breeding ground for like a UFC or for a bare knuckle. So I think it's great to have that like feeder system so the girls can really intertwine and hone their skills there. There and to really go off and set their own paths and career points. So, I mean, Invicta is another one that deserves its praise. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. There's, I don't know, there's a lot of big up and coming girls that I'm watching now, and I'm like, I, I would like to see more women in, you know, the featherweight division. There's, it's just such a, there's not a lot of women that fight at 145, and uh, like it's almost non-existent in UFC right now. So it'd be really nice to see more fighters getting into bare knuckles so that there's more females at that 145 level and UFC too. I just, I really like to see featherweight come back to life. (laughs) Agreed. And I mean, well, this also ties into you, man, because as long as I've known you and it's a privilege and a pleasure and a privilege to know you, I'm going to say this. Welcome. (laughs) What I got to say this about you, Guillotine, because, man, you start out from LFC 30, Born to be Wild with Susie, and then you go to Shelby, then you go to Bella, and then you're refing, doing as only referees can do. At the same time, like, we always joke about, like, your first fight, because not just the entrance-wise, but you talk, because I know how much you condition yourself to train and really be in tip-top shape you're like you look at me here and then you see me i'm you know i'm better here with bella inc and shelby and you're like you always talk about like you know that friggin that first bout if it's not the entrance it's just about how your weight was at the time you always want to continue to you know really progress and really get yourself in tip-top shape and i admire that because you really take everything you do seriously so i had to put that over but it's always funny to have that conversation about where you were in pandemic coronavirus friggin 2020 than what we saw at the last one last summer Man, I was fat and stomping into that ring. <laughs> Thank you. Always bring that up. That is the that's the two things that I've always said this about you. Every time like I've posted a couple stuff from the fight or history, what have you, it's either I'm fat or number two, my entrance sucked. That was what I've always get from you and it's great. Well, and then like I'm waiting for an opportunity because I have a bomb ass entrance planned. But I have to fight for LSC somewhere other than Sturgis, because we always come in on bikes. Right. So I'm like, now what do I do? <laughs> but I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, up elk hunting, I did probably in a month, third around 30 miles up at like 9,100 feet over the course of a month. So, you know, I'm up at 3.30 in the morning and calling in elk by 6 a.m. at 9,100 feet. That's three miles up from camp. So I'm I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at cardio wise, especially because I'm going to Florida. So like being at 9,000 feet all the time and then I'm going to go fight in Florida. I'm uh, pretty excited about all the oxygen. (laughs) I'm going to say this before we even get back to this elk, because this one's just shooting and hunting and doing the damn thing over here, going all buck wild. Before we get back to your buck wildness here, ma'am, we got to talk about the fact, yes, it is in Florida. And at the time of this recording, man, Hurricane Ian, and I got to say, I know that- I got an, I know that Borga is located in uh, Florida, so stay safe. Everybody in Florida, stay safe with everything that's going on. Okay, man. That's the thing. Living on the Northeast, worried about the snow. Now that I'm down south in South Carolina or even Florida, man, it's these damn hurricanes. It's these damn hurricanes. Yeah. To my friend Skyla, it's so funny because she lives in Jupiter, Florida. And I've been I've been worried about her. I didn't get much sleep last night. And I have, I've, you know, Paris. She lives, Paris loves. She lives in Florida. You know, I have quite a few friends down there. And uh, I'm like, dude, are you going to be safe? She's like, yeah. She's like, we stocked up on beer. We're good. And I'm like, I think this is a little bigger than that. And she's like, dude, no, you just don't know how Floridians are. I think that's what she said, Floridians. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. Yep. But uh, yep. but uh, she uh, ended up, her house is pretty all right. Her yard's flooded, but her grandparents live in Fort Myers. And their stuff is just pummeled and she's like dude i'm heartbroken to tell my grandparents and i'm like god i couldn't even imagine because like when you're younger you're like ah we got insurance it's gonna be all right we can rebuild it but being you know elderly and you know in your late 70s early 80s that would be just devastating and there's a lot of you know retired people that live in florida so i just keep thinking about that like oh the whole thing is just so damn sad 
Oh, it absolutely is. I've been checking on my cousin. My cousin lives in Tampa. So, I mean, I get it. I mean, there's I have a lot of peeps in Florida, too, stocking up on beer, which I think is quite, geez, that's quite funny. But also at the same time, you know, you're stocking up on what you love, but also at the same time with the hurricane and everything that's going on. I was checking out the news today. Fucking buildings being blown off. It's 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 terrific for there. So everybody, please, in Florida, stay safe. Evacuate. Yes. Do what you need to do. That's what I'm saying, man. We'll all get through this. I remember running from the hurricane when I was when it was coming here in the Carolinas. I freaking went over like over an hour to my uncle's house, and then we had to move again. We got to Greensboro because it was coming our way. Knock on wood. Thank God nothing happened here. But it's it's, it's crazy. Like I'm saying, we have one side of crazy with the snow, and then you have the other side with the hurricane. It's nuts. Well, you know, if there's anything that brings Americans together, it's situations like this. I mean, you look back to New Orleans and, you know, the tornadoes that they had down in Texas. And it doesn't matter what's going on in politics. It doesn't matter what's going on with everybody's bullshit, different opinions that they can't get over. This is where Americans really show what being an American's about. And it's helping your neighbor and being there and sending and donating money to other states. You know, we're the United States of America. Florida's not on their own. You know, I've already seen numerous states. Montana's one of them. I don't know for sure if Wyoming has or not, but they've been sending tons of linemen down there. There was like 30,000 trucks or something like that lined up, ready to go fix the power. So hopefully this is like the positive that comes out of the situation. You know, maybe it'll kind of bring some unity to the country because it's needed. (laughs) <laughs> United, not divided. It is what we need. And I mean, it's not like we're running for Miss America to talk about this stuff, but it's very true. We we need more positivity in here because everybody, exactly. I'll put it like this. Everybody, I think you'll like this. Everybody is like this. We need to be more like this. You know what I'm saying? That's all we need to be right there. That's, that's as simple yep. as that, folks. Yep, I agree. I agree. Too much division. Uh, everybody is... Uh, justice warrior for the smallest things and it's like you know sometimes you can just let people run their mouth and not worry about it (laughs) it doesn't need to be that big of a deal all the time here's the best medicine facebook and twitter have this thing it's called the feed and you just if you see some bullshit or if you see some verbal diarrhea where you see something that's just dare i say dumb assery you just Mm -hmm. scroll don't even look at it just go past yeah the more you give negative shit attention the more it expands and that's what i don't understand and we're obsessed with it because it's in our face all the damn time with the news and you know even if you would try because i go on stints where i'm like i cannot watch the news for a week because it's getting to me and like i'll get on facebook see how my friends are doing bam news and i'm like son of a bitch it's everywhere and it's never happy shit. like i remember when i was little and i'd watch the news with my grandparents They'd be like, oh, this positive happened in the community and this happened and we're doing, you know, the fairs coming up and here's where you can do this. And it was about community events and new businesses. And now it's like somebody died in Chicago. And I'm like, this is the Wyoming news. Like, I I feel for you, Chicago. I used to live there, but it's literally just for the ratings because there's absolutely no reason that that should be on the news in Wyoming. In my opinion, I'm gonna throw that in there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Myrtle Beach is even ridiculous because I mean, I'll be honest, where I live in Myrtle Beach, nice area, very nice area, but not too far from me is on the south side. Meet you on the south side, like I'm friggin' Lloyd for God's sake, but no, on the south (laughs) side, there's a lot of, I'm gonna say it right now, there's a lot of hotels that have a lot of drug dealings and stuff out there. There's some prostitution, and that's one of the big things that really has hit the Myrtle Beach area, and it's been like that for years. Like, you see stuff like that, and I'm like, Come on now, man. And there's friggin' shootings. It's like when I use my mom and I used to love going out at night, just taking a ride, riding down the boulevard, if you will. You got the nice breeze in your face. There's the yes. beach, if you will. And now it's just like we got to worry about this bullshit. And it's like, fuck. Yeah. yeah. No, and it's, it's it's sad. It's really unfortunate. And it's it's extremes is all that it is. Everybody's being extreme. Everybody's trying to be extreme. Well, not the good uh. extreme. Well, Maybe I'm the- just getting old, but I'm like, this is, it doesn't make any sense to me a lot of the times. And then I, and then you get wrapped up in it the next day. So who knows? <laughs> well, we're, well, first of all, we're maturing as we are in our thirties and doing our damn thing, man. We mature. I'll be honest with you. And I can speak like this and I'm sure you can say this with your honest and brazen self, which I can reiterate and say that I love, but as we get to our thirties, we don't give a fuck. We stop giving a fuck about what people think as Dude. we get older, just get Yep. So true. It's so true. And like the more into my thirties I get, I'm like, 
my give a shit meter just keeps going. <laughs> I'm just like, yes, it's so nice. And it's funny because you look back to your early 20s and the bullshit that you'd get yourself worked up about or wrapped up in. And I'm like, I wouldn't even look that direction like now at all. Right. It's great. Coolio dying. Yes. Oh, we got to talk about this. Cooley. We have to talk about this. We have to talk about this. Heart attack, right? Is that what it was confirmed? 59, man. Wow. And he just performed, I believe, in Maryland oh, the week prior, the week before. And then next week, dead. And he was just on what the yes. LFC channel. Yes. So if with, you want. Uh, who, who did that with him? It was Audrey. And Terry. Um, Terry. Yep. And Bella, right? Okay, so folks, if you guys want to go see Get Wet, which is hosted by Audrey Monique and Terry Feisty Fist London, first episode is Bella Rockefeller, second one is Coach Joe Kane, and the third one, God rest his soul, is the one and only Coolio, talking about stories, you know, work with about his music and talk about stories, really that showcase a lot of sex appeal and sexually explicit stuff, really opens up about his life. It's a great interview, check it out, and it's a lot of fun. But at the same time, you could see just looking at that dude, like the fun that he brought us, the Keenan and Kel theme, which is one of my favorite Nickelodeon themes, Gangsta's Paradise, Fantastic right. Voyage. Man is a classic of all time, man. And for me, oh, that's, what up, that's what I grew up on. Yeah, and it, that's the song that when it comes on in your car, you slouch and you gangster cruise. <laughs> like <laughs> As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yep. <laughs> and the funny part oh. of it is Dangerous Minds, man. Like, out of all the friggin' movies, Michelle Fyfe. Oh, my God, yeah, I totally forgot. That's where that song boomed, was that one. And then the, what was the one when they're on the roller coaster? I would think of it and send it to you, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, that one, too. Well, he had Fantastic Voyage, and he had It's All the Way Live. It's All the Way Live. Yeah. Um, yep. No, I'm thinking it's a, it's not Coolio that sings it. It's just another song that was, like, huge from that movie. I remember I had the soundtrack to that movie. <laughs> you and your soundtrack. Well, I well, it's funny that you mentioned soundtracks. I remember, this is taking it back. I'm, like, the New Jack City soundtrack. Like, for those who've not seen New Jack City, number one, number two, the soundtrack, which had, like, Color Me Bad's I Want to Sex You Up and Friggin' I'm Dreaming by Chris Williams. New Jack City, baby. It's a New Jack City. No. no. What? You're not gonna you're not gonna do New Jack City? No. 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 <laughs> All right. For those who are into New Jack City, you know what I'm talking about. You have to freaking be a buzzkill on the New Jack City. You and your no on New Jack City. <laughs> no. So yes, there's a lot of great soundtracks that still stand up to the test of time. And for me, I'm gonna say one that I remember because going back to MTV for a second, because you and I we go all over the place. This is how our minds work. We're like friggin' squirrels. Like go over every time. It is. I'll be honest with you. I have ADD and I can't pay attention. Even in school, friggin' just math. Oh, something's over there. Couldn't pay attention. <laughs> anyway, um, MTV Party to Go 2000 was my jam back in the day. Like the Party to Go CDs were freaking mm -hmm. so, right. Like mine is the one that I have with the. Uh, remember the girl with the lollipop on and she's wearing like the blue attire. Do you remember that one? No, the cover. Art? No. I don't know if I remember the cover. Okay. I'd so, probably remember the order of the songs before I'd remember the cover. <laughs> so MTV Party to Go 2000 had like, there was a dance version of like NSYNC's Here We Go. There was, um, oh God, it was a Stay the Same by friggin' Joey McIntyre, but it's like, oops, to it. The 90s club beats. Yes. It's like friggin' Deborah Cox, like, nobody's supposed to be here. It's a ballad. Then, how did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. Nobody's supposed to be here. I can hear it in my head. <laughs> That's the thing. They put a club mix to everything. And then they started to do it again, but they're remixing the old songs with new techno beats. I'm a fan. I love it. Because then my songs can be cool again. So, like, I'll drive my daughter to school. And I'm like, like the song Blue by Eiffel, was it Eiffel 65? Yep, it's my jam. They, yeah, so that's like all popular again. And I'm like, oh, this is my jam. And my daughter's like, this is my jam. And I'm like, excuse you. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I had it first. <laughs> well, technically, yeah, we did, because that song came out in like 99. Like, yeah. I remember, okay. It was the bomb at the roller rink. That's what I remember. <laughs> So when Disney Channel actually played music videos, uh, that was one of the songs that they always used to play was friggin' yep. Eiffel 65. But here's the thing, too. A lot of people have voted that it's like one of the worst songs ever in history. I'm like, 
there's some pretty other bad songs in friggin' Eiffel 65, for God's sake. Like, come on now. That's just... Yeah, I thought that one... I liked that one. I guess I have bad taste in music on that one. <laughs> to, my, my mother could tell you. And my mother would say, listen to me. Like, I would always sing that song. I used to get annoyed by it because every time it would come on the radio, I would turn it up. And my mom always used to get annoyed. Like, she didn't hate it, but she's like, oh, God, here he goes again. Here, here, here. Well, I have a blue house with a blue window. Blue is the color. Oh, wow. Like, how do you have, like, I have a girlfriend and she is a blue? Like, oh. I like it. <laughs> now, they are part of the Euro Pop scene. Do you remember where they were actually from? No. Italy. Really? Yes. Good to know. Yes. Good to know. Yes. That's, you think they would have been like Coliseum? 65. <laughs> 65. Uh, on an evening in Roma. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, no, uh, that's that's what it was, man. That's, that's that's good times. But here's the thing that's funny about TikTok now. Like there was that new leg shaking challenge where everybody's doing like do, it would be leg shaking, leg shaking. I don't know if you've seen this. Everybody's doing I haven't seen before. Everybody's doing like the leg shaking dance challenge, but every any everybody kind of like stopped because it became the number one song on TikTok. And you know who sings leg shaking? No. R. Kelly. Oh shit! Right? And I mind you, R. Kelly music wise, great human being, detest piece Horrible. of shit. Horrible. 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 And leg shaking, it like makes me think of like a dog peeing and then shaking its leg off, and we all know. R. Kelly is a dude to have around if you ever get stung by a jellyfish. But it was 99 cents. Macklemore, take you down to the thrift shop. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's also like Dave Chappelle. I want to piss on you. <laughs> right. Uh, get more ass in the toilet so you don't piss on me. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. That's so great. But that's the thing, too. It's like, like that's why I thought it was funny, because everybody's reactions, once they found out it was R. Kelly, everybody was like, oh, well, yeah, I think. I'm going to cut it loose. Yeah, I kind of had to, like, cut it loose a little bit. Do the leg shaking. Well, here's the thing. TikTok has its ridiculous dances. And that's the funny part about it is if you're a podcaster or if you're a content creator, like what we do, like, you know, with shows and stuff, fucking everybody look at it like, do I really want to go on TikTok? Isn't that just a dance thing where everybody does dance? I'm like, no, there's That's other so for you. Not a, it's not the whole thing. That It's not just everybody right. dancing. I think we should get, the next time that we have an LFC event, we should get all the girls together and we should do a TikTok dance. Okay, I have to actually give our boy, uh-huh. our boy, I'm going to give him our credit here because I think I want to do this because I'm rocking the LFC shirt as we speak here, folks. So, Tommy Bell, the one and only T-Bell himself I'm said, not- me. me too. <laughs> and an amazing drawing of Brooke. Go back and look at his collection, Tommy Bell art, baby. So he came up with the idea, and I think we might incorporate this, and we can set it for a TikTok. I can start it off, put on the LFC shirt, start dancing. You know what I'm saying? Start. To, I could get some music to it. Have you send me a video? Everybody send a video. Ladies of the LFC, bring it on down. We could start a line of just like a nice little dance montage for TikTok. I'd be about it. I know you'd be about it. I'm totally about it. Have you seen my TikTok? I'm I have a problem. <laughs> I've seen your TikTok. I'm so happy that LFC has a TikTok. Right. Like, that makes me happy. And it's like, I like the videos, especially the ones of Bella <laughs> trying to remember her lines. I think those are my favorite. <laughs> Let's go back and see it because it's hilarious. So healthy male, it be- so funny. healthy male being the sponsor of LFC, and probably I'll say this in the history of doing the LFC podcast, trying not to laugh, and they were great guests freaking amber and kyle talking about the product and then when we get to the erectile dysfunction part and trying so hard not to laugh to talk about ed but hey it's a part of the product and they do a lot of great work with their product just toughen up that little problem of yours and bella just flubbing her lines and just it's hilarious watch the blooper she gets reel. So pissed. <laughs> watch the blooper she's reel. like this is why well i don't want to say it just go watch it it's hilarious and yeah. bella has a tiktok too so go follow bella on tiktok i'm not sure what it is but it's it's Jesse Lynn. The link will be in the description. We got you. Okay. We got you. TikTok, baby. You got me. <laughs> I got you. But no, that's that, that's the thing. Watching a blooper reel of Healthy Mail talking about it, it's hilarious. I'll put it in the description. The YouTube has been blowing up for Laundry Fighting Championships. We've added a lot of the full fights. Sean's doing the thing thing on the YouTube with a lot of full fights going down. And I'm going to say this right now. Halloween, 
doing the LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D, me doing my ring announcing thing. So I'm wearing many hats, man. Social media, podcasting, ring announcing. Here Let's I am. See. Right? Well, I mean, if you're a man of many talents, which you are, that's Try what it. you're supposed to do. Yes, exactly. So for those who are at an LFC event, AJ Kirsch doing the main shows, myself doing the booty camp thing. And I'm going to say this right now. I need to come out since I'm doing the booty camp thing now. I need to come out to Miss New Booty by Bubba Sparks, Cali Park Bubba Sparks and some yin-yang twins. Booty, 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 booty. Do it. Right? Do so it. Do it. Yes, I will. <laughs> but no, that's the thing too. Like the booty camp events is also also a special one because it gives us veterans against the prospects. And I mean, we saw a lot of newcomers. This is an example yeah. of a newcomer at the Sturgis event. So, I mean, we get a lot of newbies in the LFC, and you've really honed your craft in the three fights that you've had. So, I mean, hey, when you're not in Sturgis, I hope to see you at a Vegas event, man. I get to meet you in person, do our thing. thing. I know. I was talking to Sean about it earlier, and I think I think we're working on something. Oh, come out to Vegas, folks. FSW Arena, wherever venue it is, come see LFC. You, you won't regret it. Here's the thing, too. LFC, what I love about it, like we were talking about the COVID and everything that we've been through from 2020 to 2021 and everything of that stance, we kept going. We didn't stop. Yep, yep. We kept going. All the way All to start South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the thing, too. Well, also, I'm going to put this out there. So LFC Exposed, the reality show. Uh, you can check it out on LFCFights.com. As we're talking about the content that LFC provides, you can see this one and Terry shopping, doing their thing, shopping at Sturgis. Right. It's one of the great she's, episodes. She's the best. Amazing. It's like she's we like, have so much fun. Like the two of us together is insane because she's so high energy and like it makes me seem calm. Like if she was around my friends here, they'd be like, wow, she's really overwhelming because they think I'm a spaz. <laughs> so. <laughs> She is just always, like, ready to go and happy about it. And I love her energy. She's a Sagittarius, too. We talk about this every time I'm on the show. <laughs> In the well, we have to. Well, first of all, Terry deserves her flowers, number one. And number two, she's like the den mother of LFC. Gets everybody together. Let's go shopping. Hi, how you doing? Very positive. That's a positive energy that you need, especially not just oh, yeah. this climate, but in LFC. Because sometimes there could be some... With LFC, it's a competitive drive, mind you. But God dang, man, uh, with Sturgis as well. Sturgis has kicked off a lot of amazing events for LFC and rock concerts. I remember talking to you about Shine Down, doing the damn thing. Dude, that was awesome. That was my favorite concert ever. Well, them and Rob Zombie, but shh, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> but it was awesome. Uh, the animal got us on stage, so we got to watch them from like right there. It was it was killer. It was it was sick. It was a good show. It reminds well, first of all, Rob Zombie is a nice mix too. I mean, when you talk about feel so numb, get the whole album of the Sinister Urge and just everything like that. Oh, Rob Zombie is the man. You gotta artist. watch the new Monsters movie. He directed it and Sherry is in it. It is so good. I will add if you're a Monsters fan. If you if you didn't watch the Monsters like back in the day, then when you watch it, it kind of jumps around. So I could see how somebody would be like. I don't understand what's going on here. But if you did watch it, then you're going to be like, wow, he did such a good job. Well, that's the thing, too. And I will say this. I'll definitely check that out. Like, a lot of people hated on him for, like, the Halloween stuff. Like, I didn't hate the Halloween stuff. It wasn't that. I didn't hate it like everybody hated it. But, you know, it's his nice little take on the Halloween films, you know? Yeah. I, I wasn't so much of a fan of those. But nah. I like I like his de like Devil's Rejects. Yeah. I really, really like that one. Um, I, I'm a fan of his music. What was the one? It was kind of a flop. I only watched it once. I don't even know if I'll remember the name of it. Uh, I think it was a symbol. What the uh, heck was that one? I know Devil's Rejects, and I know stuff like that. But yeah, I, I'm sure there was... Well, he had a lot of flops with those, and I'm not going to lie. A lot of those were kind of flops. And I mean, it was around yeah. the time... That was around the time when... Remember Cabin Fever like came out? Mind you, not Rob Zahn. Remember Cabin Fever? <laughs> God, that one was awful. When she's shaving her legs in the tub. Oh, so bad. Here's what got me. Because me, I'm an actor guy, and you see them from different roles. You put Ryder Strong in that movie. You put Sean Hunter from Boy Meets World in a horror movie. And I could not take that off my mind. I'm like, what the fuck is Sean Hunter doing here? <laughs> Topanga. Where's Topanga? Where's Topanga? Topanga. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, did you know they got their own show now too called Pod Meets World? It's their podcast. They're like reviewing all the old Boy Meets World episodes. It's her, Will Friedel from uh, Boy Meets World, Eric and Sean. They have like their own podcast now talking about Boy Meets World. Wow, I didn't know that. Hey, my well, spa- well, my uh, spazzy daughter. Your spazzy daughter <laughs> is, is going to be needing me soon. I don't know how much longer I can keep my house quiet. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Well, that's I have three dogs and a pig at my back door right now. Like, let me in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. That's that's what we get with the variety in the overall pop culture. And I will say this because I did have a couple final things. Uh, so we're, we're making perfect time here. So right. you're going in here. It's November 5th, folks. Mark the date. Mark the calendar. Brooke is making her debut against Jessica Borga. So I got to ask you, final words. Going into it, it's a big bout. Your final words to Miss Jessica Borga. I am ecstatic for the opportunity to learn something from you, win or lose. But I am going to bring it. It's not going to be like newbie debut. So I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, let's put on a fucking show. Beautiful. Let's get bloody. <laughs> Beautifully said, knock down, drag out, fight, hit him with the left, hit him with the right, up a cut, up across. Boom. I love it. Now, folks, please check out LFCfights.com, fights underscore LFC, LFC underscore fights, and LFC fights, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LFCfights.com. Links will be in the description. Check out LFC Network on Roku. Where you'll see this face. You'll see this face, and you'll see a lot of great faces of the LFC brand on the Roku channel. Get on your TV. My TV's right here, baby. Turn it on. Watch the network. So for you, get, get it. <laughs> now, Miss Brooke Gilly, you have your social media thing, thanks. You're doing your thing on the Twitter, the Instagram, and the TikTok. Let everybody know where we can follow you, man. Um, so on Twitter, it's at Brap underscore girl. And then Gilly Brooke on Instagram and at Brooke Gilly on TikTok. Those are my three main that I'm using right now. We're doing a Facebook revamp. So Okay. That huh? one. That one I wouldn't go to right yet. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go to Facebook yet, but definitely give her a follow on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you want to see one of the funniest things, because I put on a lot of the entrances, watch the entrance with her and Bella Inc. from the Sturgis events, because Bella's right in her face, and you can hear it as visibly and audible as ever. She gives Bella Inc. the finger and says, fuck you, bitch, <laughs> and I died, because it was just so funny. And it made for an amazing fight between you, Bella. Just fuck you, bitch. It, no fucks given. You want to come in my face? Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> it slipped. <laughs> it did, but I caught it, and it was great. She was ready to throw hands, ready to take down and put the guillotine on. Fuck you, bitch. Put it on a t-shirt. That was epic. That's your new catchphrase. I had to put that right. over as well. Right? Oh, that's great. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck, bitch. <laughs> Round two needs to happen with you and Bell Lake. We definitely need a round two. Oh, you know, we've talked about it. I'm like, I, I want to do that again. And she wants to do it again. So, Sean. <clears throat> <clears throat> Check out Brooke the Guillotine Gilly on all forms of social media. Check out LFC where you'll see her fights and see so many great, amazing people. So I will say this to close this out. As I always say, whether it be girls, whether it be what have you, women in general, the LFC fighters. This is my love for women. Here we go, folks. Beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Brooke the Guillotine Gilly, fuck you, bitch. I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> we'll talk to you later, Michael. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Gonna kick some.